All right, everyone, now we have to talk about Alaska for the midterms. I really wish we would get more polling here because th there's so much trajectory over the last few weeks uh, against the Democrats that I have a feeling that these races may have shifted. But I'm not getting any new polls from Alaska. Hell, we're bare. it's two weeks out from the midterms. You'd think that more polling firms would be interested in exploring other possibilities other than Nevada. Texas. I got a million polls out of Florida. Dude, stop polling in Florida entirely. We know that DeSantis is going to win. Pivot around and go to Alaska, New Hampshire, and some of these other states and get me some better numbers. Anyway, Lisa Murkowski, the never Trump Republican, basically a female Mitt Romney, uh, which is, uh, is damaging when you're running in a state as red as Alaska, uh, has decided to endorse uh, Sarah Palin's uh, opponent, Peltola, in uh, an election that's already going to be all manner of screwed up. I, I'm not even going to bother making predictions here because I have a feeling that what happened in the original uh, uh, primaries that you had, you know, some weeks ago, uh, you had a new system called ranked choice voting, and a lot of people aren't used to it. And so a lot of people, I think, didn't fill out the entire ballot. They voted for their primary candidate and then didn't vote for anyone for, like, second choice, third choice. And so Sarah Palin was denied the majority. She does move on to the general election, now facing off directly against Peltola. You also have Murkowski. She's being primaried by Chewbacca. Uh, again, Murkowski only has a Republican opponent at all that's capable potentially of beating her because of the uh, state having a new system. Murkowski definitely has an advantage regardless of what the polls say, and so does Peltola. I'll explain why. Murkowski has some Republicans in the state that still support her, and because she's running against another Republican, will presumably get most of the Democratic votes there. That should carry her to the, the victory. It's not certain by any means, but she does have that advantage in that two-way race. Sarah Palin is at a disadvantage because Peltola is now going to get support from some of those neocon Never Trump Republicans as well. It is a slight advantage, though, to say the least, because Alaska is a major MAGA state. It is exceedingly red. A probable supermajority of the Republicans there are MAGA and have embraced, you know, the, the modern century instead of living in the 1990s. If Murkowski gets knocked out, by the way, and MAGA picks up another Senate seat, Boy, oh boy, won't that be a reason for Donald Trump to run in 24. This is basically a proxy war <laughs> between Trump and the, and the Mitch McConnell Republicans. McConnell, by the way, getting officially rebuked uh, over and over by the Alaska Republicans, where the GOP has officially endorsed Palin and Chewbacca in their respective races. Uh, for, for effectively meddling by refusing to free up funds for the MAGA candidates while openly backing Murkowski. He sent millions of dollars to Murkowski to fight another Republican in a race where the GOP can't lose the seat. They will automatically have a Republican in that seat. And it shows that Mitch McConnell is more fearful of people within his own party than he is of the other party. It's a uniparty sort of thing. He can, at the end of the day, work with and bribe Democrats. Or, or blackmail them or something. They all go to their orgies and coke parties together after the races are run anyway. They hammer each other relentlessly on TV. Then they show up for one another's weddings. This is a repeat sort of thing. Do you think that Mitch McConnell actually dislikes Nancy Pelosi? No, he just has topical disagreements with her. At the end of the day, though, they'll negotiate. And usually those negotiations result in narrowly passed bills that screw people, uh, a la gun control that Cornyn and Romney signed on to. Along with Murkowski, I wonder why. And this is a, a, a st astonishing display of the uniparty at work. They are more afraid of Chewbacca and Sarah Palin entering Congress than they are respectively of saving that money for other races, having Murkowski in there, you know, continuing to be the neocon that she is for another six years, and, and, and Peltola, I mean uh, Chewbacca and Peltola. Uh, they're afraid of the MAGA candidates. They're not afraid Peltola is a centrist Democrat anyway, sort of like a Chuck Schumer figure. Uh, they, they would rather have her in there than Sarah Palin. They're afraid that Sarah Palin will go rogue. Mitch McConnell is waging a fight against Trump through the Alaska race. And the, the reason why they're wasting money in a two-Republican race, Murkowski v. Shabaka, is because of that. Mitch McConnell doesn't care about the composition of the Senate. He doesn't even care if he's majority leader, minority leader, or whatever happens. He doesn't care if the Democrats take three or four seats. At the end of the day, he's less concerned about them ending the goddamn filibuster than he is the possibility that another MAGA candidate will be there that will occasionally disagree with him from within the party. 
He's also afraid that he'll become majority leader and then get kicked out because too many Senate Republicans will be uh, MAGA. He's worried about that encroachment on him. what he sees as his right as a long-term senator. Murkowski is a neocon. Now, to be clear, I'll point this out. As a non-Republican, a non-partisan, I see no problem with negotiation between various parties. Hell, there should be more negotiation. It would be a good thing. What I do have a problem with is the fact that the people that are undergoing that are all a bunch of goddamn neocons. They're pro-war. Uh, Murkowski is absolutely a warmonger. She's just like Romney, just like the Bushes, etc., etc. Freewheeling spending. She's not going to stand in the way of Biden economic policies if she's in there. She'll side along with them as long as she gets some pork barrel handouts. The concept of negotiation is fine. The problem is the manner in which it tends to occur. The manner of negotiations, especially in the U.S. Senate, is effectively if you sign on to my bill, I'll insert a couple of lines into that bill giving you another library, upgrading one of your highways. It might be a road to nowhere, but it'll be a fancy road to nowhere. We'll build a couple of bridges to nowhere. We've had that meme literally with Sarah Palin, by the way, in the past. The MAGA is not immune to the freewheeling spending in all cases. We'll, uh, we'll invade a third world country that you have some sort of familial gripe with. Oh, you got stiffed uh, by this Colombian drug cartel? We'll, we'll pay them a little visit. We'll, uh, we'll unleash a couple of uh, uh, Hellfire missiles on uh, some of their operations in retribution. And we'll make sure to get you HD footage of it. I hate to tell you, but this sort of thing happens in the halls of Congress routinely. Negotiation, in the proper sense, is great. Two parties, uh, you know, roughly representing two semi-separate ideologies on some issues, more separate than others, by the way, get together and they say, look, you're not going to get 100% of what you want, neither are we. We're going to try to work through this to get something that, that people can generally sign on to. Something that might be watered down on both ends, but at the end of the day, we've actually accomplished something. You perceive of theirs being a problem, we perceive a different problem, and so we, we try to synthesize our views. In most cases, though, you don't have proper negotiations. You end up with a bunch of pork barrel, and the parties only ever come to agreeing and passing that legislation when it's something screwy. When it's a, a huge spending bill, so-called infrastructure bill, Green New Deal bullcrap, some sort of stimulus to buy votes that will end up inflating the, uh, the economy or something like that. Murkowski is definitely part of this. Chewbacca is not part of this. Seems, seems a more, is her and Sarah Palin, you know, Sarah Palin, someone who I'm not a, a super fan of, uh, certainly back in the day when she was the running mate of John McCain, uh, her greatest feat was uh, destroying his uh, presidential ambitions, I suppose, for what little it's worth, because the alternative was Obama. I don't know. I think if I could go back, I don't know that I'd change my vote. <laughs> to be clear about how much I hate John fucking McCain, his family, uh, apples didn't fall far from the rotting tree, by the way. Yeah, just look at uh, look at uh, Megan McCain. Uh, Murkowski, though, uh, should should go. Will she though? I need more polling. I need to see if this. I don't think this has a huge impact on the Peltola Sarah Palin race. I think it's amusing more than anything else. Why are no pollsters looking at these races? I'll tell you why. Because up until a month ago, it looked like the uh, Republicans and and in this case the MAGA Republicans were lost. They were they had been written off. Sort of like they wrote off Mehmet Oz. You still don't have enough polling from Pennsylvania either because the polling firms now have to make up for lost time. You're going to get a lot more polls now that we're in the last couple of weeks before the midterms. I, I would like more than one or two polling firms to weigh in. How the hell am I supposed to give a prediction when I don't even have any numbers to go on? The last poll between uh, Murkowski and Shabaka, and, and I think the only one they conducted was a couple of months ago. I haven't seen anything with the Palin-Peltola race. At least then I can get some idea of what's going on. Much like with the Pennsylvania race, unless there's a massive and dramatic swing towards Mehmet Oz post-debate, I will probably, on midterm night, I'm going to have a little list beside me. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I might as well announce this now for people still watching this video. Here's the format. Got Sleazy as co-host. We're going to have guests. We're going to be going about four hours, maybe a little under or over, depending on what we're seeing. I'm going to have a list of the final polling aggregate totals beside me for some of the competitive races, especially those on the East Coast, because we'll get more numbers for that throughout the night. And I'm going to match them up to the final results, and we'll be able to see if there's a skew within polling, and if it's, you know, local or if it's systemic in nature. 
For some of these races, I'm going to flip a coin to determine who I decide uh, I think is going to win. I'll do that with Pennsylvania probably. I'll probably end up doing that for both races in Alaska, although we won't be live when those results come in. And I don't think that they have a fortification issue there, so a little bit different from Pennsylvania. I might also, here's a fun game, I'm going to flip coins for uh, all of the competitive races, <clears throat> anything that's not within, outside the margin of error, and we'll see whether my predictions or totally random chance literally flipping a, go a goddamn euro uh, is better. That'll be funny now, won't it? That's about all. Peace out.